Dean Davidson Live, weatherblog.com, meteorologist here with your overnight outlook. First, taking a look here, Great Lakes is going to have some moisture popping in, also in the Pacific Northwest. And as it moves tomorrow, you see this clipper starting to come across Michigan. You also see the moisture here in the upper Intermountain West. And that'll project itself to the east here, moving towards the east coast. By Sunday, you see we get a next system starting to develop here in Texas. It's following the jet stream is coming down the boat here. And Flipper is coming towards New, New Jersey, Pennsylvania area before the next high pressure bumps into the area. Now we're going to go into next week, and it will start getting interesting. First, the high pressure is stuff organized here in the northeast. Lows in the center of the plains, following the jet stream in, coming down the tube, down the tube, and going back up. All right, continue it. Continuation shows here, day four to day five. Here we go. Lows down here. And one thing about that is. You read Rob Reno's thing uh, blog earlier. Cold air damming. What is cold air damming? Cold air damming is taking cold air and puts it inside of an area, and it happens a lot down here in the Roanoke area, but it also happens up in the north where the cold air gets trapped. What that can do is, is in a situation like this, the low pressure sitting at this location, okay, what that'll do is get the northeast wind, get the, dam the cold air, and what it'll do is keep the, the freezing point close to there. So a lot of the times we have problems with ice. Ice is the bigger, biggest problem with cold air damming because we get the cold air to penetrate but at ground level but not in the, uh, parts of the atmosphere which gives you freezing rain. And sleet. The majority of these happen in that aspect. And then you have the low. It cranks itself up here in your main. But look where it is on the inland area from here to here. But basically it's a post hugger all the way through. So your inland areas are going to be the areas that have the best opportunity to get snow while, while your areas in, along where the front is positioned in this map will likely get ice or rain. So I'm not saying they won't get any snow, but that's that's what it looks like at this point. I'll show you the models in a minute, GFS I have up uh, in this, and you see the high pressure then builds in. We'll get these fronts starting to pop as they go along. This is off the 18Z run. And what we got here is hour 84 off the 18Z run. We're going to have a low try to develop here. The moisture is getting sucked in here. Here's the freezing line, Northern Virginia. So anywhere along that freezing line has a probability of getting some frozen precipitation. Moving along here, a couple frames, you see where that froze line is way back in Pennsylvania. So there you get all rain, ice to rain in this area, the whole eastern area. The only thing that keeps it any kind of ice in the probabilities is that cold air damming. I said the heavier moisture at this point will then crank into Massachusetts area. Then we go to 132, the low has developed here and pushed out. The frozen line's back down below the North Carolina, so cooler air will penetrate itself back into the area after the storm passes. But it looks like this one's gonna be a wintering mixed rain event. And some of it could be heavy rain. Not enough not as much moisture is shown on the NAM here, but you can see here's our zero line, the cold air damming and there is precipitation in a generalized area of the other of the GFS, but we see here a little bit more spotty. And but this will crank itself. This is 84 hours out. It doesn't really go after that in NAM, so we're not really in the forecasting pattern here for NAM. But it shows at 84 hours. It shows really close. Um, when the heaviest precipitation is very close in similarity here. One thing we do see, but with both of them also, is that zero line is up in New Jersey, so around it, we're going to look at rain at that point, and then that'll be pushing in, and all this warm air will penetrate itself into the areas as the low develops. Winter storm watches along the top, the upper coast here, I mean the upper Midwest, excuse me, not the upper coast, the coast here, Florida, upper coast of Florida, has freeze advisories and fire weather advisories, and you see the special weather statements throughout, and heavy rain, flood, flood watch, flood warnings here in the Pacific Northwest, and look at Hawaii, finally, some drying air in Hawaii. Roanoke Valley forecast tonight. Overnight, we're going to get 22 degrees, mostly cloudy skies, mostly sunny, 44 Saturday, 40 on Sunday. Martin Luther King Day, chance of snow starting up, then change to wintry mix overnight, uh, 33 there, and then rain going to snow again on Tuesday before clearing out Tuesday night. Highs in the 40s and 
lose around 35. And for the triad, no questions here, 21, partly cloudy overnight. 47, Saturday, 48 on Sunday, rain moving in from Martin Luther King Day, rain likely Monday night into Tuesday, then clearing out Tuesday night. Highs around 45 to 48, and lows around the mid-30s. So we have a storm to watch here for the weekend. We'll keep you updated and see what happens here, how it all occurs for next early next week, and we'll keep you updated. We just know that in a trial, we're going to see rain, and we're going to see mix in Roanoke. More information further up, tomorrow further up the East Coast. And stay with LiveWeatherBlocks.com meteorologist for that information. For LiveWeatherBlocks.com, this is meteorologist Dean Davison. Have a great night.